What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tools back here again for Practical Machinists. And today we are here in sunny Long Beach, California for West Tech 2023. This is one of the few shows that I've actually been to more than once now. So we're gonna get a chance to see some stuff that maybe we didn't get to check out last time. We're gonna see some of my favorite brands here, some that I use every day in the shop. And as well, we're gonna get to see some of the newest automation, hot button issues that we're all looking at right now. We're gonna to get to check them all out together. Let's go take a look and take a walk. So this actually takes part, uh, takes place during the same time as a show called AeroDef, which is more of the aerospace and defense show, but West Tech, kind of a general purpose machining and manufacturing show. Um, I know there's a lot of automation companies showing here, work holding, tool holding, tooling companies, including machine builders. Uh, companies have actually also brought full machines here. So we're gonna get to see some demos, we're gonna get to see some stuff running, and hopefully, we're gonna get to see some stuff you might not have seen before. We were here two years ago and that was my first time at this show. Um, this one actually looks bigger. I see a lot more machine tools here, a lot more cutting tool vendors. So this should be really exciting. Um, it's really nice to see trade shows coming back, you know, especially during the pandemic, there was a bit of fear as to whether they would continue. But uh, no, it looks like there's good attendance here. This is pretty early on the first day, but even when we showed up, we could barely get parking because there were so many people coming in. So that's encouraging. The other thing, if you come to a trade show like this, you're gonna see is there are a lot of students here. Um, I know that SME and AMT have a program where they actually bring in students to come check out the show, get exposed to machine tools and you know help them learn and develop as they go. So that's something you'll see a lot of here, which is always cool. We're gonna be stopping in at some vendors that we've met before, maybe some we haven't. I see some of our favorites like ECI. I saw Jurgens on the other side. I see SMW Autoblock down there. So hopefully we're gonna have a really good show. So one of the cool things about coming to trade shows is getting to check out some brands that you may not be as familiar with, but you have seen a lot. That's, you know, the Citizen Mayano uh, machines here. I've heard a lot about them, I know them, but I haven't actually seen them in person. And this unit caught my eye because it's super, super cool. Come over here, let's take a peek. So what this is, is this is actually a dual spindle machine that's using one tool holder or one tool turret to turn both spindles at the same time. So you can see they have a demo going here where they're turning two parts off the same tool holder. Something I haven't seen before. I don't know if it's common or not, but I thought it was really interesting. And the other part that made it interesting is this giant FANUC robot on top that's actually loading and unloading this machine with a pallet on this side. So of course, while we've seen pallet, uh, uh, robotic pallet changing machines from the outside, this is the first time I've seen one that actually operates on top and moves things around in that regard. So in this Citizen here, this is actually really cool. This is a dual spindle machine, kind of like the other one we looked at, but this one's actually dual turret. So we have live tooling and dual turret, but not only that, we have that same double facing tool turret on there. So you can machine off the same turret, two parts at the same time, while also using something like pinch turning or you know back facing, or you can use them completely independently like we're seeing here. Really interesting stuff to get that much versatility out of this small of a space. And when I know when it comes to trade shows, sometimes it can feel like you see the same companies over and over again. And it is important to check out companies you may not be familiar with. So to help me out now, we're gonna look at what I learned is pronounced FEEV today with Scott. Scott, Hi, thanks Dwayne. for joining us. Yeah. Now, I was walking by the booth and yeah. I saw obviously the yeah. color caught my attention. I noticed some names I knew on the side, but I don't know who FEEV is. Why don't you tell and, me a little and, bit and about it? And that's what we hear a lot is who's, who's FEEV? Thieve is an engineering company. It's over 200 years old. And over the years of 200 years, they've, they, they've grown, acquired, and the brands that you're aware of, they're, they're, they've bought, but no one knows who Thieve is. Well, it's the parent company. Every one of our products in our, in our uh, businesses are engineered products. That's the common theme across all the businesses. And with that, we've, we've purchased the, the likes of Giddings & Lewis, Landis, 
Gardner, all the brands that people are aware of. Cincinnati. Cincinnati, for sure. Um, but they're not familiar with Thieves. Thieves is just a parent company that, that's associated with us. We talk about one solution. What does that mean? Well, we make the machines. We make the tooling. Yeah, I even the, saw tooling the, the, the over tooling, there. I saw what looked like the a grinding tools, wheel. The grinding wheels for the machines. We supply uh, the automation to load the machines and the service and support and spare parts and rebuilds of old legacy machines. We can provide not just new machines, we can rebuild machines to make them like new and warrant them as new. So when you're talking about one solution, you're literally talking about from initial need for a machine all the way 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road to refurbishing it. Correct. And everything it, in between. Exactly. And in the US, I know you guys, just from reading a little bit here, you have quite a bit of service. How many technicians do you have in the US? We have over 100 service technicians just for a high precision machine group. Whew. And that's spread out all over the country and in Mexico. So if I needed somebody at my shop tomorrow, there's a good chance that could happen. There's, within 24 hours, you'll have somebody there. Because especially, I have a feeling, just based on some of these brands you guys are, are handling, these are high production facilities these are in. They can't afford downtime. They can't afford downtime. And we have thousands of machines installed. Some of these brands have been around for 140 years. So I equate that to today and how many machines are there. There's always a machine down somewhere. So if people want to find out more, they should definitely be checking out thieves.com. Thieves.com. Now I want to show you guys something that caught my eye. I just got the lowdown on this from one of the shunk guys. But when you think shunk, you generally think work holding. And I think of the big heavy chucks. I think of some of the tool holders. But something I haven't seen before is this machine tending package. I had to ask him about it because I needed to know what I was looking at here. But this is really, really cool. When it comes to automation, it can feel really, really intimidating because you know, you gotta spend 50 grand, you gotta spend 100 grand, you gotta know how to program a PLC, you gotta know how to wire it all up. This whole package here from Shunk, which is a premium level company, you can get this on the floor and going for less than 15 grand in most cases. So here's what we have here. We have these two Shunk vices and they are pneumatically actuated just with these two little valve controllers at the back there. So they're super plug and play, very modular. And what it can do is it will open and close those vices with that robot. And all of this is actually controlled from the cobot. So, you know, you don't have to program six different controllers or make it, you know, work with your machine's M codes. It's all controlled from one spot. So what it can do is you have these two vice grippers that are also pneumatically actuated, all runs through the same system. And it can basically go and tend your machine as you're there. But the other thing that's really cool there is, you know, the one thing that a lot of people say is, I want to put a robot on, but at the end of the day, someone still has to come and deburr all the parts. These guys actually throw in one of these deburring centers right with it. So again, I believe that is, I'm not sure if that's air or electric. I didn't actually ask, I think it's electric. But what this can do is while the machine is running, after it's done, it's tending, it can come over here, take your parts, and actually do the little bit of deburring that maybe you can't hit in the machine. Or maybe prepping it for the next operation, you know, after running op one, maybe you need to knock off the burrs on the back side. It can do that, put it back in the pallet, and have it ready to load again. So this is a interesting setup that I haven't seen before. I think it's really good because it's approachable. You know, it's a very easy to access price point. So I highly recommend checking these out if you haven't seen them yet. I'm gonna be looking into them. This is one I want to make sure I show you guys. If you've seen a lot of my content in the shop, you know, showing what's going on in my own shop, YG is something we use an absolute ton of. Um, I've been using them for years. One of the biggest things about YG, I feel like they're totally slept on because it's very difficult to beat their quality, especially at their price point. You know, I was talking to the guys earlier and they're actually one of the biggest consumers of carbide out there. For instance, these V7 Plus A's, we tend to use the four flutes but for my bread and butter cutters in the shop, these are what we use. Conversely, for the aluminum we do, probably about 80% of what we do to 90%, we're using these alu powers. Solid carbide, three flute, high helix. These ones actually have a radius on the corner. Beautiful, beautiful for doing work. The other thing I wanted to show you guys, because I just got the quick lowdown on this here, is when it comes to the turning inserts for cemented carbide, these regular CNMGs here, which are fantastic, we run them in the lathe almost every day, but these here, for end user price, are between five to eight bucks an insert. 
you're getting four edges out of each one. Plus, if you have one of those holders that you can use the 117 approach angle, you can get holders that you can get four more uh, corners out of that insert. So we use them till we get rid of the edges, then we turn them and we use the other four edges. Five to seven bucks, you're not gonna be able to outperform that. Now I did want to stop in here at Sodic. If you know my shop, you know I have a wire machine from these guys that's a little bit older than this. I have an AQ325L wire machine, which you know we use just about every day. Obviously there's some much bigger, much newer versions of this, but I did want to show you guys this from Sodic, which I thought was really interesting. So not only do they have the brand new wire machines which can run circles around the one I got right now, of course they also have the sinkers, which they're well known for and do great work. But one thing I didn't know they make were these mills. So this is a Sodic uh, UH650L back here. Looks like a nice little unit. I see a lot of shops putting these in for actually machining electrodes for their sinkers because you need to machine the graphite or the copper to be able to do it. But I would keep an eye on these machines. They look really, really nice. Make sure you check those guys out. Now I did manage to run into Caleb from Covenant Manufacturing. Hey. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for uh, talking to me here. Now your shop is about, you were saying eight hours north of here? Yep, yep, I'm in the uh, Sacramento area of California, Rockland specifically. Yeah. And what's exciting to check out here? What's brought you down to the show? What kind of stuff are you looking at? Yeah, so basically I came down here mostly to meet people, to see what's going on in the industry. Um, I'm also looking, trying to strategize my next moves because I'm a mill only shop currently. I'm trying to figure out what, what's the best next option as far as lathes go, um, as far as inspection tooling specifically, because that's a big bottleneck in our shop. And then mostly just to get like a, a nice a sense of industry trends. Is it going more medical? Is it going more semiconductor? That's what And you kind of do a little bit of everything there at that shop too, do you yeah. not? Yeah, so I'm very low volume, quick turnaround, high complexity. So typically if people are coming to me, it's because they couldn't get it in time from someone else or because they had issues with quality from somebody else, not necessarily like high volume type. Work. Right, it's just, that's kind of what you're geared towards. Exactly. Yeah. Now, if you're looking at a lathe, what kind of aspects are you looking for? Are you looking for live tooling, dual spindle? What kind of stuff are you looking for me, at? For me, how I view it is because I'm a mill only shop, um, anytime I'm adding capabilities to my shop, what I want to do first is I want to make sure that I'm not putting all my eggs in that basket. Right. So I'm looking for probably just a simple two axis lathe. Nothing fancy, probably nothing that's really being shown off here, but I want to know that, okay. I have these number of customers, they have 20% of the work from them is going to be turning. If I have a lathe, can I become their primary and only vendor? Absolutely. So that's, that's what I'm that's thinking That's the way about. to go. I mean, we started with a two-axis lathe. We just mm, added okay. five years later mm -hmm. a live tooling lathe. Mm -hmm. You can get away with the two axis for a long time and it's got the versatility, like you say, yep. to do everything yep. you need. Yeah. Now, if people want to find out more about your shop, where can they go? Yeah, so I've got a website that is Covenant Manufacturing, uh, covenantmfg.com. Uh, I've also, I'm pretty active on Instagram, that is also uh, Covenant MFG. And then I'm also pretty active on LinkedIn. My name's Caleb Harris, and you guys can look me up and I'd love to chat with anyone there. Thank you very much yeah, for joining right. us. Thank you so much. So there you have it guys. I hope you enjoyed this tour through West Tech 2023. This is one of my favorite shows because although it may not be as huge as some others, there's a lot of really good technology on display. You can see all in one place and all usually in one, maybe two days if you really take your time. If you haven't been before, I highly recommend checking the show out when it's back in 2025. And of course, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.